In 2012, Minecraft was dying. Mojang's policies had brought giants to its knees, destroyed communities, and on top of it all, the biggest name in hosting, Bucket, shut down. And with it, went the spirit of open source. During these times, one name came out on top, Spigot MC, promising faster and more powerful software. It's no wonder it took over the online community by storm. However, Spigot was still based on Bucket, meaning it also used Minecraft server code, right? Well, join me today to find out how Spigot and its team managed to save Minecraft from its lowest moments, and how eventually it lost the crown to a newcomer. This is a story of Spigot MC. In order to understand Spigot, we first need to talk about another project, Spoutcraft. Spoutcraft was a plugin and API allowing other plugins to run on it. While Bucket was using modified Minecraft server code, Spout was running on top of the server, meaning it was essentially a middleman between the software and the plugins. Spout itself did not do anything except for smoothing for teleportation. However, there were a few things it enabled and pioneered, such as inventory GUIs, particle effects, fly speed, and a whole bunch of other stuff we take for granted today. In many ways, Spout was the grandfather for modern Minecraft. It is on this project that in November of 2012, a user called MD5 announced in a thread on the Spout forums they were going to start their own project called Spigot MC. Based upon the core foundation of Spout, Spigot would work on top of the Minecraft code rather than Bucket's approach of reverse engineering it while enabling the same features than Spout but with a focus on performance and a way more easier to use API. With the launch of the Spigot forums not long after, they saw a small but dedicated fan base growing. The biggest boost to its popularity however was its resource manager. While Bucket had its own plugin manager, in the beginning not all Bucket plugins ran natively on Spigot so in order to make it easier for Spigot users to find plugins that actually worked on their servers, they made an index list of all plugins compatible with the Spigot software. And a month later, in order to help with development, they opened up for donations, with the Hive being the big benefactor for the project. Other big servers took notice to the point that 8% of all Minecraft servers and 28% of all players were on Spigot software. While at the time that was nothing compared to the dominance of Bucket, the introduction of paid plugins made developers actually prefer to build on Spigot rather than Bucket, as it offered so much more under the hood. Many staple plugins found its start at the Spigot forums, with more and more plugins on the website, the fanbase grew even more. Then, in June of 2013, MD5 and the guys at Spigot released an absolute game changer, Bungie Gord. A Minecraft proxy allowing multiple servers to be strung across a single network. I won't explain in detail what a proxy is, but some context is needed in order to understand how big this was. A proxy, at its simplest, is a server director, allowing you to change from a lobby to a survival, skyblock or minigame server. While proxies are nothing new, this was the first one that was easy to set up and maintain. With it being embedded into Spigot's code, supporting it natively, it was fast, efficient, and allowed big servers to expand their already big networks into gigantic proportions. Bungiecord was the final push the project needed in order to win over the Bucket diehards. Although, as we know, it did not need to compete for very long, as Bucket was not long for this world. Since this is the third video in the series, I won't dive too deep into Bucket's downfall, or why the EULA almost brought down the entire online community. If you want to watch those videos, there's a card to click on right now. Hint, you can click with the middle mouse wheel to open it in a different tab to watch later. You're welcome. But a long story short, Mojang restricted its server owners from making any money from its servers, and this caused the project lead over at Bucket to shut down the entire software while Mojang revealed it had bought the project two years ago, resulting in a DMCA takedown request from one of the Bucket developers, causing 150,000 lines of code to be removed. In the video about Bucket's shutdown, I mentioned Spigot was also affected by this, as it was a fork of Bucket, meaning it shared some code base. The DMCA also affected them, so why did they not get taken down? Well, for a short amount of time, it was. Although MD5 found a way around the DMCA request by not bundling Mojang's code with their software, they used something called build tools. This software, when run, would download a copy of the Minecraft server, decompile it locally, the Spigot code would then insert itself into the Minecraft code, patching it and modifying it until it was a spigot jar. Essentially, they were building the server from scratch on your computer. Since it was the user executing these commands, spigot could not be held accountable for this, allowing them to essentially skirt around the DMCA request and Mojang's lawyers, with a promise to update the spigot software to the new Minecraft 1.8. One month later, after Bucket's demise, many cling to spigot as the new kings of online Minecraft. 
And during Minecraft's darkest days, it managed to shine a ray of hope towards the future. While these days, PaperMC is the more popular option, being a fork of Spigot, PaperMC supports all plugins from Spigot itself, meaning you can still download paper plugins on the Spigot forum. Though this is about to change, as Paper just announced Hangar, which is basically its own resource manager, complete with its own forum, UI and payment integration. With Minecraft performance getting worse with every update, Paper wears the crown Spigot used to have, as it can't compete with the absolute performance boost it brings to servers. With Folia on the horizon, promising a whole new way of coding and hosting, Spigot days may be numbered. But that is another story for another day. For now, I was Lunar, you've been awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.